What is going on? You are watching and, of course, listening to Tags Live, a.k.a. Talk About Gay Sex, the live edition, where we're here every Wednesday night on the Crowdcast platform. I am your host, Steve V. This is episode 576, and no, your eyes aren't playing <laughs> tricks on you because Cody Maurice Dolgett is in the studio with me. Hello. Hello. Hello, darling. Hello, darlings, everywhere and out there today. Yes, I'm in the studio. I don't have my wig on, and I feel lovely. <laughs> so good to be here with you. What this also means is that Cody is back from Kansas, and he is back in New York City, and cheers to that. Cheers to that. Super yeah. great to see you. We are, like I said, in front of a live virtual audience, and I see some familiar faces. Already Doug. Hello, Cody. I hope it's cooler where you are at than it is where i'm at where are you doug we want to know shout out to us all night long way in james hart so good to see you oh my god look at those poppies hot poppies uh, excuse me love that and keep those comments coming through because we've got a loaded up show for you on this juneteenth holiday celebration if you all know we are celebrating juneteenth here as the world is or at least in the states and that is because it is what i consider the second independence day when in 1865 it was determined that slavery had officially ended and why june 19th well it that was the date when union major general gordon Granger arrived in Galveston, Texas, to announce that slavery had been abolished. And Texas was the last state where it was being practiced and communications being what they were at the time. Word had not reached there until then, because essentially, Cody, President Lincoln at yes. the time issued the Emancipation Proclamation back in 1862. Well, that didn't go into effect until 1863, which was essentially freeing slaves in all states that had seceded and joined the Confederacy. Well, it didn't, back in those days, they didn't have ways to get around as quickly as they do now. And that's why we are, it took a whole nother few years to make it to Texas. <laughs> Sure. <laughs> well, thank you, Texas, for getting around to it and freeing everybody. And it's really a celebration that we all should be celebrating and should. And I'm so glad to be celebrating it. And it's kind of cool to be celebrating it in Pride Month as LGBTQ people are constantly celebrating our independence and our freedoms. And it's kind of cool. What do you think of that? Yeah, this is the best day to be black and gay. That's all I have to say. <laughs> and Love it. <laughs> I'm doing my damnedest to be the blackest and the gayest I can be today. I should stop clapping now. Uh, <laughs> yeah, this is just a day for me personally to reflect on all the people that gave their lives for my personal freedoms. So I, I'm really, really happy that everybody gets to celebrate Juneteenth. I think that everybody needs to reflect on what it actually means for everybody to be free and just just, you know, take this time to not only have off and go out to a cookout, but realize that people have impacted your lives before this. I love that. Yes. I mean, so I learned that. I, absolutely. I wrote it. <laughs> <laughs> well, you know, last night uh, I flew in from Europe and had such a great time in Europe. And you can hear that a little bit more about what my experience was in Portugal and Spain on episode 575. But you, Cody, last night had a really amazing night with Billy Porter. What occurred? What can you tell us? You met Billy? It was one of the most <laughs> pinnacle moments of my life. I've admired Billy Porter since Love is on the Way from the, uh, what soundtrack was that? The First Wives Club soundtrack. Yep. And it was fantastic. I've loved his voice for such a long time. I think that he is a phenomenal uh, icon. He is an example of what a gay black man should be. And I saw him last night and I have to say he was so invigorating, so inspiring. And I got to hug him. I got a, a nice, beautiful picture with him of me, him and my little girlfriend. She all right. She's beautiful. <laughs> what was the occasion and why were you out celebrating Billy? So he is uh, releasing a second part to Black Mona Lisa, which is his album. And he was there promoting that. And, you know, he has a tour coming up. So he was just basically having a conversation about his life. 
We read a bit of his memoir. We, we heard some of his songs, the new songs that were coming out. And it was just a night of love, the love on Billy Porter. And, you know, it was the day before Juneteenth and it's Pride. So why the hell not? Right. And then what can you tell us? When does the album drop? And what was the st- Oh, you made me feel good? <laughs> <laughs> Probably out soon. Or really Pride. Quick. But what was the style of music that you heard? Because he had a nice mixture of songs on the first part, part one. Yeah, and it's still dancey, it's dancey pop R&B. And I, I loved every song that I heard that he played. So I think that everybody should go out and get the second part to it. He's just, he said last night that it was more of a continuation. I like that. Of the first Black Mona Lisa. So I, I don't really think it's a new album, but I think it is something that people should go listen to. And you just get into it. Billy is so worthy of support. I got so many messages on Instagram about how he's a lovely person. So I, I totally agree. Uh, I should actually put the... A picture that we took yeah put it up there you know my well you put that up there my sister saw him last year for the release of mona lisa the first part and she said what an amazing show oh look at you there i know i look so bald and beautiful you look, all three of you look stunning yeah i love billy he's the i told him he was my icon and he just gave me the biggest hug and the warmest smile. I didn't tell him that he liked picture, uh, some of my Instagram pictures, though. So <laughs> I love it. That's beautiful. Oh, my gosh. So exactly. cool. Maybe he will listen to some of your music. But more importantly, we need to tell you that we are on the countdown to our season. It is our season eight. And we are in the middle of a special offer that you can take advantage of right now. In fact, we want you to take advantage of it because when you do, you get extra special perks. And what I'm talking about is between now and June 30th, it's 11 days, the end of Pride, we want you to go ahead and grab a tier on our Patreon page. And there's only two to really worry about there's the virgin and the sub tier and when you do you get things like commercial free podcasts you get things like extra topics uh, a full episode at at the end of each month you'll also get to join our discord channel where you get to talk with cody myself and some of the other hosts throughout the week you could weigh in and you get our monthly hangout as well where we'll jump on and it's really just a chance to talk about anything you want to with us hosts and there's only two tiers and when you do by june 30th you'll get immediately access to our upcoming live virtual live stream which is going to be different from the show it's going to be really personal intimate stories from cody and myself we might have some special guests and more importantly you're going to be able to hear cody sing his brand new music talk about it plus some other new tunes and some covers as well yeah and that will be in july so go to patreon.com forward slash tags podcast before June 30th and grab a tier. And the first two, we're in the next, as we do this countdown, the first two that end up going to it, whether you're watching us live or listening to this, first two are gonna get products from Joy Mode. And what I'm talking about is our new testosterone booster. Ooh. So if you happen to be the lucky winner, I will ask you for your address and I will s- send you this. This is going to boost your testosterone. I take this now every day. And my workouts are stronger. I am better in bed. It's all that good stuff. We talk a lot about testosterone. You will get this. I will send that off to you. And the other winner will get our sexual performance booster, which you probably heard me talk a lot about it. It comes in a little sachet. You mix it with six to eight ounces of water and you are good to go without those harsh chemicals that are in a lot of the products that we you know what i'm talking about this is natural i also use it before i work out too so these two for the first two that sign up when you grab a tier of the virgin or the sub tier by going to patreon.com forward slash tags podcast before june 30th and grab a tier i'm putting it in our little notes here and more giveaways to come. So stay tuned as we near our June 30th 
special offer. So we thank you for that. And you know, when you do grab a cheer and you get these special perks, know that you're also supporting Tag's podcast as well. And for us to continue to do the show that we love to do. Okay. Wait, but can I win? That? Yeah. That's what I want to know. Cause I need, uh, some, I need some of both of those. <laughs> That's all I want to know. Can I win? You cannot. No, it's off limits for you, okay. but I've got you covered on so many other levels. Thank you. We have to talk about what everyone was talking about yesterday. I and mean, I'm talking about Justin Timberlake, who is currently on tour, you all, but took a little break by himself, son's wife, to party in the Hamptons yesterday, the day before yesterday, and was literally stopped over by police because he was swerving, he was going in the wrong direction. He claims he only had one martini yeah right well the gays couldn't help but celebrate this with meme worthy downfall of justin timberlake because essentially why do you think the gays cody are so happy i mean i'm one of them because i think it all started with janet jackson yeah, back in the day totally. when he threw her under the bus on the super bowl and then years later he gets his own essential Super Bowl moment, which was whack, which was whack. <laughs> Britney Spears, we don't need to talk anymore about that, where she was essentially coming after him, too, because she talks about it in her book that they wanted they were going to have a baby. And he had told her he didn't want to have the baby. And it's just on and on with him. I think his time has come up. Well, I do think he's a good actor. I saw him in a recent movie called Reptile, and he's actually a really good actor. My thing is, I think he should just, like his wife, focus on his acting and his family. I think if he wants to, which I could care less about, he could do an in sync reunion. But I do not, I'm not really, I never was into the boy band, certainly not into in sync. But the album that came out last year, solo album, I don't know that it did that great. And when you're in tour, like right now, every artist is on tour right now. And you got to dot your I's and cross your T's like Taylor, like Beyonce, like Madonna, like Janet. You can't go out partying and get pulled over by the police and then go on tour. It's like Nicki Minaj did the same thing when she went to Amsterdam. Yeah. She had pot in her bag. And it's like you can't be sloppy when you're on tour. What do you say? Oh, yeah, I totally agree with you. The gays are up all over Justin because he is he's been reckless in the past and I used to love Justin Timberlake but I do think that a lot of things have come to light and it's made me realize that he's not really that great of a person so I'm not going to support somebody like him like Puff Daddy like anybody that is doing sketchy things to women so I think yeah. this is his comeuppance and that he should really reevaluate things for himself I think he should just go away period uh, I saw one of the <laughs> one of the memes that were out there and it said future sex uh, jail songs or something oh, like yeah. that which I really it, it was just hilarious to me and it's from what I understand, uh, the arresting officer didn't even know who he was. So that is should tell you that he should really go sit down somewhere, maybe focus on your acting, like Steve said. But I really think you should just go raise your little babies or whatever. Yeah. Well, we want to know what you say. Bryce says, I hope he learns his lesson, but I don't wish him ill. Of course, none of, of course, us do no, either. No. And, you know, if he messed up this one time, he needs to also be accountable for it as well okay moving on somebody that we are a big fan of, of here on the show trixie mattel i know you're a big fan of from drag race there's a really good l.com interview with with trixie because she's really slaying in so many departments i mean when you say if you listed all yeah. the things that she's done really quickly what are some of the things starting with drag race she's a winner baby Okay, she's she has uh, she won uh, all stars. I think it was four or five, something like that. Either way, she's a winner, baby. And she also had she's released albums, which were really good. They're folk albums, I believe. She also has a very successful uh, talk show with Katya called Uh, and it that's so funny and hilarious. And then she's also the host of the Pit Stop right now in the motel. Oh, and Trixie's Motel. That's right. And she has a, a very successful TV show regarding how she that hotel came to 
fruition. Yeah, it's like on and on with her. And I believe, I'm pretty sure she's got a song coming out with my favorite Vanessa Williams, <laughs> In Time for Pride. Yes. So excited because they both hosted Queen of the Universe, correct? Yes, she, they did. You're and right. the list that song going. is coming out and I can't wait. But the interviewer of Elle asked her, you really have done it all. How do you maintain this energy? I mean, do you live off a Red Bull and five hours of energy? And Katya, this is what uh, Trixie had to say. I can't really do it anymore. I'm going to going on a three or four month sabbatical, July, August, September, and October. I'm not even doing social media, so I'm going to be really gone for a while. I'm probably not even going to come back at the full speed of Trixie anymore. Wow. The Trixie we know, the Trixie that is on every YouTube video, on every show, and in every TV show, I just can't sustain that anymore. This giant rat wheel that I've been running on, I need to pull back a lot. So it will be honestly this phase of everybody being like, you're everywhere. How do you do it? You do it by running yourself in the ground. She wants a family and she wants a life. And the other drag queens have been waiting for her, I think, to take a break because she really is slaying it and everywhere. And I mean, when you hear this of Trixie really pushing it and how this really this lifestyle isn't really sustainable and how she just wants to grow a beard and be with her family. What do you say? Bald and bearded is the way to go. That's what I have to say. <laughs> yeah, I think that Trixie, you, she's so right. You just cannot sustain being constantly going, doing everything. Doug even put in the chat that she has a whole makeup line out too. That's a lot of work. So I think that she's right to take us a battle. Take, take time for yourself to refresh yourself. How can you come up with new ideas, be creative if you are, are not filling your own cup at first. So I think that Trixie should do what she's doing and take a lot of people should actually take a sabbatical and refill their cup so they can have interesting and new perspectives to, perspectives to come out with when they are being creative. I agree for mental health as well. I mean, a lot of us, us included as content creators, have to really, you can't really take a break. I mean, I just literally was away for two and a half weeks in Europe, but I, I think I skipped one show um, altogether because you and Teddy Alexis hosted it because I literally couldn't on the where I was. The Wi-Fi was just so bad. And so as content creators, as people that, you know, don't have traditional jobs, but, you know, you need to do a lot of different jobs to make ends meet yeah. and you need to keep your face out there that... You know, it's you can't really take breaks, but then at the same time, you have to find those times too. I mean, I was fortunate. I have you guys co-hosts and I was able to, I enjoyed one week off from this seven years of podcasting twice a week for the last, I think it was four years now. And I think we all need those breaks too. And, you know, say what you want, but you were in Kansas and you were with your family it's important to take those breaks too. And we love New York, but you, New York is a place that you have to get away. Oh, definitely. I was just talking about this to, with some of my really good friends. And this, I really suggested to, my friend was saying that she was tired of New York City. And I said to her, take a break from it. Go elsewhere, experience nature, ref refill your cup, things of that nature. And, y y you know, it will just do wonders for you. You can come back to the city refreshed. You can go back to your life refreshed. And it would be much better for you in the long run. Uh, the thing about Trixie that I think is so interesting is that uh, she she really should. I feel like she's really taking this time for herself. And I forgot what I was going to say. So I'm going to re reiterate something I said earlier. She should take this time for herself and rediscover who Trixie is and and really just you know, take stock of what is important to her in this time. Absolutely. And we wish her well, and we are going to enjoy all of Trixie we can before that sabbatical. I'm sure she's probably done so much. She has so much in the books that we're going to see trick, trickles of her material down the pipeline that is, you know, it will be as if she never left. That's right. So that's what I was going to say. I was going to say four months might, might not seem like a long time in the grand steam scheme of things but when you are out there and you're a social media person and you are an influencer and all of these other things in entertainment it really is a lot of time so i'm glad that she's taking this time she's filling her own cup 
I'm glad that Katya has taken time for herself as well because she's going through her own struggles. And I think that this is the best thing for both of them, honestly. Yes, absolutely. Uh, okay, we've got to move on to some health news and the recent health news. I feel like we're always talking about something related to our health news. And right now, there's a new sexually transmitted fungal infection known as ringworm. You probably all have heard of it before. Well, the first found case is here in New York. It's essentially, like I said, a fungal infection. And you'll notice it around the genital areas. And experts are essentially saying that uh, the, the first person they noticed was a person that came back from Europe. They were in Greece, they were in the UK, and they admitted that they had a lot of sex with men. I remember watching this story, and they came back with that. Um, the one thing that experts want people to know is to examine your genital area, because where it will show up is in the anal region or the growing region. And what you wanna do is if you see something in that area, like they say, if you see something, you need to say something and feel comfortable talking to your medical professionals because the more we can keep this at bay because experts say it is totally treatable. It is a simple, there's an ointment for it as, as mama says, and there really is for this one. But what we don't want it to do is continue to spread. And what they're fearful of is a lot of people admitting that maybe they did have sexual fun like we all do and that's how they got it no you need to and when you are in certain cities if you don't feel comfortable talking to your medical professional hopefully you're in a place that you can go to a clinic an lgbtq clinic but honestly really our word here on the show is develop a rapport with your general practitioner because you want to keep these things at bay and for the most part, they're affecting, they always affect New York first, Cody. And so in New York, if you didn't even want to talk to your general practitioner, we've got free clinics here devoted in, and for the LGBTQ community. And so you could go there, there anonymously and actually talk about it. And so we encourage you to do that. Oh, definitely. And, you know, gay men are, generally speaking, very responsible when it comes to this, having lived through, you know, the HIV and AIDS crisis. So I think that this is something we are well equipped to handle. So just go out there, be as safe as possible. If you don't want to check yourself, have a friend check you. Uh, that could be very fun, in my personal opinion. So I think that everybody should just be as safe as possible. Like Steve said, get comfortable with your doctor and then you will be nice and unringwormed thank you <laughs> i love it i love it we've got to move on i just passed cody the wine i lost my train of thought and we are loving being in the same studio this is a lot of fun okay well last week on episode 575 we were talking about stats that grinder put out for 2024 that they noticed in particular cities well this week Pornhub has dropped some shocking gay adult content data from just in time for Pride Month. These stats I like a little bit better than we talked about on the Grinder ones because Pornhub routinely releases new insights about the type of adult content people around the world love to watch. And this Pride Month is no different. Well, this year's stats for June lay out some shocking insights. Some highlights include the following. Older generations, Cody, are way more likely to watch gay porn, with the 65-plus age group being 104% more inclined than others. That, to me, isn't that shocking, really? that stat. Older populations, I feel like we grew up, many of us, in the well, in the 65, grew up with porn. And maybe you're not as sexually active in certain age groups, so that is your form of sex. Also, I kind of think... Yeah that maybe some of these people haven't really explored their sexuality being six to five and over and coming from an age where it was looked down upon or kind of more hidden to be gay. So maybe that is why they're just coming into exploring their sexuality and they're doing it in uh, through porn and no uh, and other f fashions. Uh, so the next stat is uh, 
people aged 18 to 24, they show a strong interest in the cartoon category, which is, I love cartoon porn. That is my gig right there. So with a massive 304% higher likelihood compared to other age groups. So am I 24 now? Is that what you're telling me? Well, you talk more about it because you, you love <laughs> cartoons. And what does that I so one thing when I see those cartoon porns, I'm always tempted to click on them because they really have done a good job of our fantasies of anime, our fantasies of like the voice and the sound. And they're not afraid to go there in some of these cartoon porn. Do you like it? Because as somebody that really you're a, if anybody knows Cody, he collects cart not cartoons, Comic comics. Yes. And would you f like this kind of porn? I love this kind of porn. I remember growing up and having different porns of of a cartoon nature. And even now, I will I read manga porn by I think it's called Yaoi. I I don't know if I'm pronouncing that anywhere near correct, but I know that it's a thing that I enjoy, and I I love it. I like Scooby Doo porn. <laughs> Is there? <laughs> there is. I will show you. It's there's Scooby Doo porn. There's this really good yeah. porn called. <laughs> do, do that again, really quick. Yeah. <laughs> yeah I, there's a really good cartoon porn called Goblin Cave. I want you to watch. Okay. I have a whole repertoire. Okay, I'll turn you on, and you will. You'll love it. Okay. Love it. I really no. I I'm actually kind of into it. Porn consumers also in this porn hub stat reported in the state of Maine watched 28% more than the national average. And on the other hand, the state of Alaska is 22% below the national average. It's cold. It's cold, <laughs> too much sun, I don't know. 43% uh, of gay content is viewed by women. That's surprising. This doesn't really surprise me because a lot of women that I know, a lot of cool women are so frustrated with their hetero choices out there. And I just met somebody when I was traveling that she's become a new good friend of mine. And she said that her favorite is gay porn. And she says she's a a gay man in a straight in a in a straight woman's body. I believe her. Does that surprise you? And with it, that, it really does surprise me because I feel like why would woman, women want to see two men go at it? So it really confounds me. I would really like to pick your friend's brain because I really want to know what really intrigues her about seeing two men have sex. Maybe for me, the only thing that I could think of is that she's attracted to men. But then the part of me that thinks that women are attracted to masculine men, that would take them out of the fantasy for me. So I really would like to talk to her and see what she really get the breakdown of what attracts that her to that. We'll bring her on. And lastly, in this study of Pornhub, worldwide bareback content is the most popular genre of gay porn watched in the US. And that doesn't really surprise me because I think once prep, pre I think we always liked bareback content. I mean, if you look over your right shoulder over there, I've got a numbered Tom of Finland listening audience uh, over there that a, a, it's a true Tom of Finland drawing. It's numbered and a guy is taking a huge cog. It, there is no condom to be seen in sight. And I think even back in the day in the AIDS epidemic, when I was, we'd like to even watch that. There was a brief period, of course, during the pandemic, uh, AIDS epidemic, that condoms were used and everybody was using them and it was the whole thing. People still use them and it's fine. But I that doesn't surprise me, Does that, that stat. Does it for you? No, not at all. I think that porn is fantasy at the end of the day. And I think that I personally cannot watch a porn with a condom on. Yeah. It just really doesn't do it for me. So I... I I understand that stat, stat 100%. So I think that, you know, it's it's neither here nor there. I think that everybody should be as safe as possible. But again, remember that porn is a fantasy and it's there for you to indulge your fantasies. They're all taking care of themselves. They're all getting checked regularly. And go do you. Love it. Well, it's time to talk penises as there are other co-hosts, Teddy Alexis sent, to this, sent us this story by Edge Media. The most attractive penis findings 
well, they might surprise you. And the, as reported by the Daily Mail, researchers from the University of California, Riverside, reportedly set out to construct the perfect penis by sur surveying 1,029 1, men and women, and the results might surprise you. Why? Well, researchers apparently had the participants look at computer-generated images of erect, circumcised penises to paint a better picture of what makes a penis a great penis. Here's what they found. Uh, what they found in the survey is that sh shaft length or the shape of the head was important, correct? And according to the participants, they preferred members with a longer shaft and a more rounded ridge at the base of the head, but not a big head. That surprised me because I just going to be honest, I have a big head and <laughs> oh. guys at least, because this was men and women, guys typically like my big head. And I'm just going to be real, real with that. Um, here's some of the other things they found that the width from top to bottom over those that changed with size. So in other words, a more even penis versus like wider in one area, narrow was less ideal and the ideal phallic aesthetic varies by individual as they say but these were just stats by various things that they took do you agree with some of these findings and what are your thoughts of them so i have always thought that my penis was very aesthetically pleasing so <laughs> and it fits into the category and all of the statistics that they, they have pronounced here my my shaft is pretty long my my head is pretty it's it's proportionate to the shaft. And I think that, you know, I have the perfect penis. I would like to show everybody. <laughs> you can. <laughs> but you have to go to Steve's OnlyFans for to see that. <laughs> um, yeah, no, but I think that all this makes sense. I wish we had some uh, display things so that we could show on the show right now. But, you know, we might get demonetized or what have you. <laughs> but here's a question for you. But okay. do you feel like gay men were... We probably, I think women that I've talked to, well, I'm talking to my, about my same friend and she says she prefers girth to length. Okay. And that's just her. I said, I agree with you. But on the other hand, I also think that we as gay men like a lot of different shapes and sizes. So many bottoms might like huge thick cocks to suck and worship, but maybe when they're bottoming, they can get off with a more medium-sized one. We also tend to worship cock, I feel. I'm just going to put that out there. I think a little bit more. And like a huge thick head, a lot of guys like to see it go into an ass and do a point of view camera moment. Why do I say that? Because I've done that recently with my cock. And so I don't know. I just think we are a little bit more open-minded. What do you say? Oh, yeah, I totally agree. I think as gay men and having our own penises, we like the uh, the variety and because it's the spice of life, honey. So we're out here doing the things that we want to do and seeing as many penises as we want, because that is our our God given right as as human beings to see all these penises and to suck them. And <laughs> I think it's a beautiful thing. Yes. Well, we are live and we would love to hear from our live virtual audience. What's your favorite type of penis long short thick everything james watching us live says i like girthy ones i love a big head too okay james uh, i like that too and so yes absolutely we want to hear from you want to hear from you as well we'll give our handles at the end of the show as well did you say which uh, type of penis you prefer because uh, i'm curious i am actually equal opportunity i've learned to like all of them whore <laughs> as my friend would say yeah right um i think before i had like there's an old porn star that jeff striker you had him on your name tag back in the day and his was girthy and thick and even and and it was just perfect and beautiful uh but and i've always thought i liked that kind and i do but over the years at 53 i've seen a lot of dicks and penises and cocks and i really 
almost appreciate most all of them and can make them all of them work. But yeah, of course, I have ones that, you know, I see and we're going to get to thirst trap in a minute and a little bit later in the show. And maybe I'll change my tune a little bit. But yeah, <laughs> well, for me personally, I've always liked the aesthetics of a big, fat, long, juicy cock, like Raheem Shabazz, like Cade Maddox, all of those people. But in practical application, I'm, I, I like something a little bit more manageable for me personally. So I like a nice five or six inch thing going on. So yeah, I'm, it, it's all about your preference and what you're going to do with it, basically. Yeah, and these days it's like who it's attached to is so important Whoop, because em. yeah, bloop. <laughs> <laughs> I'm serious, right? That actually makes such a huge difference. So all of it, they're all beautiful, they're all amazing. Um, I'm not just saying that because they really are, and I can make anything work. But of course, there's certain ones that we can have preference to at times. Can I say one yeah. more thing? Also, when I am having sex with a man with a, a dick smaller than mine it makes mine feel so much bigger so that is another reason that i like to have sex with men that, that have smaller penises than me i love it i love it okay um we've got to move on um you know i just want to talk briefly uh about an underrepresented form of sexuality and i'm talking about gray sexuality gray sexuality or gray a is a middle ground a between asexuality and allosexuality, not feeling sexual attraction. Asexuality, not having any sexual attraction. And it just describes people whose experiences with attraction don't fit rational labels. And I was watching a TikToker, Ali Pasta, really break it down. And I really loved what they had to say about it. And they included people to ask questions about this and i was watching a movie cody on the plane the other day cat person and it's a uh it's a really good movie actually and in the movie it's amelia jones and nicholas braun uh and amelia is in college and nicholas is in his 30s and he meets her, she's working at the movie theater, and it does go a little bit awry, and it's such a thriller, but Amelia's character's former partner was this guy, and he, you know, she's back home, and she's talking to him, and she's she thinks he turned gay, and he's like, actually, I'm ace, and she's like, what is that? And she, asexual she's like that's he said that's what people call it he said i thought i was gay because i didn't really have an attraction to have sex with you anymore but i tried having sex with men and that was even worse and he said i looked it up and i'm really asexual oh, wow. and it's a real thing and we really want to bring attention to it on a sexual sexuality podcast that while we talk a lot about positions and the sex that we really enjoy and we want you to have continue to have hot gay sex like we say at the end of every show but we also want to be aware and welcome our asexual our gray sexual counterparts that really live amongst us and we want them to feel free to eat, talk about their sexuality as well and it gets really innuendo cody when you talk about it because some of them can actually have romantic feelings but not want to have sex some of them can have sex but don't want any romantic interest and it's really layered we don't have enough time but we will continue on this show to talk about these gray sex and it's called gray sexuality on this show we just want to bring light to it especially in pride month that these are also ways of expressing sexuality gray sexuality and these are real life existences yeah i just think it's amazing that there are so many sexualities and there's so many ways of being a human and being sexual or non-sexual out there in the world. And I just think it's a testament to the, the nature of being a human being or even just a, anything on in the world because it's, it's throughout nature. Different genders, different sexualities, all of that exists in nature right now. So I think that the more that we teach people about gray sexuality and all of the sexualities out there in the world, the more that people will get accustomed to it. 
And I think that that is the, the best thing that we can have out there is understanding for one another. Yeah, it's one of the beautiful things about TikTok, like this Ali Pasta was talking about, that they are really excited to talk about it and be an information source to so many people. And often we put down TikTok and these are ways that we can learn about different forms of sexuality, about different you know, polyamory that you're not going to get in books right now. You're not going to get in the news. And this is when social media is good to teach us the layers of sexuality. And I often say the reason that we did this show was we sexuality. Everybody is so such novices. We are all I'm so young at 53, barely scratching the surface of my sexuality in my 50s and it's many of us are still exploring this because we haven't given been given license to talk about this in an open form in an open dialogue and and made to feel like that we can do this and talk about these things and gray sexuality is real and i'm so happy that people are talking about it and we will continue to on this show yes we will and it's really it's just amazing that people can be themselves and really explore who they are. And it's such a, a wonderful age for us to be able to do that. And TikTok, I've learned a lot of good things on TikTok. I've learned how to boil an egg in two minutes. Okay. All right. <laughs> so don't put TikTok down. Just use it as it is. It's meant to be a tool. So at the end of the day, just use it for, you know, for bettering yourself and giving yourself more knowledge. And staying on some recommendations, we just talked about Cat Person that you can watch. I think it's on Hulu right now. But in Pride Month, one of the w great ways that you can celebrate Pride is through film. And one of the films that I recently watched on my way over to Europe that's on Apple TV is Femme. It's a really ex like electric film. Of a, it's set in the UK. It is features a drag queen, a black drag queen at the beginning of the film who is does an amazing performance on stage at a bar, a local club. And she goes to she to a local, if you will, a bodega. We call them here in New York. And she sees a guy that's checking her out and later who was checking her out earlier in the night. And then she sees him again at the bodega. But now he's with his friends, his blokes, as they like to call it over there in the, across the pond. And that's when all things go, because she calls him out that you were looking at me earlier. And from there on, she gets beaten up, but it is about revenge. And it is such an, a really in, like electric film. I can't, that would be a great film to watch. Also, uh, Cadell from 1982. Cadell is just a classic film that's really like theater. I loved it so much. It is a classic film. It was based on a book, and there's a lot of penis reference. It, the sex is really good from 1982 perspective. I loved it so much. Cody, I have it recorded here, oh, okay. and I will. It, it it, yes, it's so good. So those are my recommendations to watch in this Pride Month. Fem sounds like such a thriller, so I can't wait to see that one, too. So Kerel and Fem, watch them, girls. And in this Pride Month, you know, we talk a lot about people coming out all the time. You guys last week were talking about American Idol. Um, what's his name? Contestant David Archuleta. Yes. And how he came out and his process. You know, we don't often talk about sex workers, people in the industry and their experience and maybe what their experience was by their family. Well, Austin Wolf, who many of you know, who's a huge porn star, only fan sensation revealed how he came out and explained his adult content career to his mom. And it really, at first, he says, I remember being on the phone with my mom and she found out I was going to a gay bar. We both hung up in a little bit of anger and for a month, we didn't speak a lot and she was confused. Eventually she came around and had questions. Well, what did she say? Well, as time went on, Wolf's mom grew more supportive of his sexuality and even encouraged other members of his family to accept him for who he was. It's our job not to be angry. It's our job to educate, said his mother. Well, once he began his career in sex work, Wolf says 
his mother didn't bat an eye and immediately supported his path in adult entertainment. She's like, as long as it's safe and as long as you're happy, I'm sure you're going to be the best because you've always been the best in everything you've ever done. She's never seen any of my content and she's by far my biggest fan. Well, I think that is so amazing because, you know, we always talk a lot about people coming out, the coming out experience, what people, how they are embraced. We don't ever focus a lot of those that do, are in the adult arena, adult content creators. And yet 99% of us have at one point, if not 100, consumed, enjoyed, taken in some form of adult content. And yet we often have this disdain, even within, I would argue, our own community, have turned a, a, a nose up at those that do adult content. And even in my 50s now, where I have decided to, I have a sex positive podcast, and now I produce adult content at in my age. And I just think that this is so beautiful to hear from, especially somebody like an Austin Wolf, who has such a huge following, who is such a biggie in the arena, to hear his story, not just about coming out, but about what he does, because it shouldn't be shameful. It's given a lot of people a lot of pleasure, and in many ways. And I think that to hear that his mom didn't bat an eye, I think this will normalize adult content, something that we all know and enjoy. Oh yeah, I definitely agree with you. I think that Austin Wolf is out here and uh, he's doing his thing. He is very successful. I've seen a couple of his movies. I don't, I mean, I don't know. <laughs> I certainly haven't jacked off to uh, about a hundred of them. So, okay. <laughs> but it, it, as a parent, that is what you're supposed to do. You're supposed to lift up, uplift your child and you're supposed to try your best to understand them, even if it's something out of the, the scope of what you know. And um, a great example of that is Marlon Wayans and what he's doing with his child. And I think that, uh, Austin's wolf mother is a, a great example as well because she didn't understand at first, but she went outside of her box and she supported her child. It's been proven that with this support, children grow up to be more confident. They are less repressed and it, they're just better off grownups at the end of the day. So I think that everybody should take a lesson from these two amazing parents and, you know, do support your child no matter what, basically. Absolutely. And let's talk about somebody else that we're really proud of. And, you know, out.com did a cover story and beautiful shoot on Joel Kim Booster. Uh, you know, he is coming off the success of his one man show. He is doing so much. Um, he's got new material, like a new film coming out next year. He's even going to be doing a, uh, a, um, a superhero film Which one? Um, coming out. He's working on it. But some of the things that I was really struck by in this cover store, you got to see the pictures. Go to out.com because we love Joel Kim Booster over here at Tags. He says, I'm terrible at math. I don't, in, in regard to his Asian. Uh, being an Asian American, I'm terrible at math. I don't know karate. My dick is huge. And how he and he was a pretty gay kid, he says, in childhood. And he says, I think a big part of why that worked early in my career, where he was on stage, I, I'm, he would say, I'm hot. And the audience would laugh because they think, isn't it cute that this Asian guy thinks he's hot? They weren't laughing necessarily for the right reason at that point. Booster is also aware that images of ripped queer men in media and social media can amplify mental health issues like body dysmorphia, especially among gay men who are particularly at risk. He's like, you realize that the more you emphasize it, the worse you make other people feel. I want to be able to own my own sexuality. I want to be able to take thoughty pics. And I want to be able to do all these things that make me feel good and feel confident. But I, what do you think about the whole thing? Because I think he's speaking to the fact that American society, at least in particular, has not always embraced the, the, the female Asian woman, yeah. but not the male Asian man. Yeah, they, they definitely uh, accept the, the female 
uh, thank you, the female aesthetic more, but with stipulations. They have to be a cert- They have to be submissive. They have to be all of these things. But uh, Asian men in general are not seen as attractive, as hot, as masculine. I personally think that Asian men are beautiful. So I, I, I don't understand where any of this is coming from. I'm glad that Joel Kim Booster is out here breaking all of the stereotypes and being his authentic gay Asian man self and telling everybody how hot he is because I think he's super adorable. (laughs) And if he could call me, hello, I know he has a boyfriend, but one night, what is that going to do for you guys? Nothing. Okay. All right. So call me. Okay. (laughs) I a hundred percent agree with you. When he says, I want to be an Asian sex symbol, that's really powerful. And that's a really powerful thing for Asian men, especially to see, to see an Asian man who's confident sexually and in his body and wants to have move in in the world owning that I think Asian men don't get to do that a lot and we don't get to be sex symbols and you know what I especially we're so we're starting to see it in the hetero world with the Asian male population but he's doing it in the gay male population and the it's an exciting time right now we're seeing a lot of changes happen in the community and it's with all of our our um, counterparts and it's I think it's a really exciting time so uh, Doug watching us live says he can take as many pics as he wants to and then send them my way please I agree with you yeah okay. yeah can you forward me some Doug please because <laughs> apparently he's really nice I saw him at a cafe in in LA recently and he looked like delicious and he was a sex symbol as I watched him get his car I was just like wiping up the drool and my friend just met him and said he's equally hot in person too so go on with your bad self Joel Kim Booster we're here for you and I want to just take this quick moment that um, if you want a book to read this summer that's coming out June 26 I'm currently reading C. Travis Rice or otherwise known as Christopher Rice that's right the da- the son of the famous and rice and rice and this is the book it's called sapphire dawn it's really good i will be interviewing christopher uh next week for this show but i'm already reading this it's super good and layered and juicy and everything you want it's got adult content in it and gay and it's really good it's called sapphire dawn coming out soon get it and we can have a book club moment with it so i highly recommend that that's my other pick for Gay Pride Month, we have a lot to, to get, get out there. It's really oh, yeah. exciting. Yeah. We're doing the most. Um, let's get some advice before we get into our favorite segment. And is this the one that you wanted to do? Or yes, what? Okay. So we love to give advice on the show. And by the way, you know, you can always write into us. We'll give our handles at the end of the show or go to tagspodcast.com where we can give solicited or unsolicited advice to you, relationship or sex. You can always count on us to be real and honest and spill the tea. Well, on this Reddit thread, a husband has a boyfriend that he refuses to label as such. What do we mean by that? Well, when my husband turned 40, he entered some midlife crisis and became depressed. This happened around a year ago. During that time period, six months ago, we also opened up, like opened up the relationship. His depression seemed to lift when we met someone at the gym. My husband has never been disciplined about anything. He was never the type to stick with something more than a week, but he suddenly started going to the gym before work. Hmm. I welcomed it at first. He had a gym friend and was holding him accountable. I didn't think much of it until he invited him over. He was 26 and hot and all over my husband. He was vague about his hookups. We both were. Our policy wasn't don't ask, don't tell. No, but don't tell, but nobody asks until two and two. Wait, what is that? Until I put two and two together. Yep. Okay, sometimes it's hard to read. I can see a positive change in my husband, but I'm uncomfortable to, by the relationship. When I first asked for clarification, he said Harley, they hardly have sex. He's not interested in him that way, and, he, and it helps him with the gym and nutrition. What really got me is my husband got him an Apple Watch for his birthday, which is crazy for someone you've only known for six months. This guy is creeping into all aspects of our relationships, He's dog sitting for him, helping him move furniture, accepting late night calls. I think 
he we have surpassed boundaries and i'd rather he admits what this is and cuts him off i can take him being called i can take being called insecure if that's where i am uh i think you're moved he's moved way past the point of this is unacceptable and i think the guy writing this has allowed way too much to occur in this situation without not putting uh, what I like to call as uh, not boundaries, but guidelines. guidelines. Yeah. yeah, I totally agree with you. I think that this has gone very far off the rails. And I think that th uh, they need to do something very quickly and very expeditiously to remedy this or they're going to lose they're going to lose their relationship. This the husband is actually lying about having sex with the guy. That's what I read in 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 some of the context. Mm -hmm. uh, and I think that th that's completely unacceptable because when lying comes into a, a relationship, then it's all downhill from there. So, and buying an Apple Watch, maybe I need to get his number, okay? <laughs> you, know, you know how expensive they down. are? Put it down. <laughs> We're sharing the mic on this. <laughs> yeah, I think negotiations is what Kyle Applegate calls him versus rules in open relationships and i'm starting a relationship right now if we were to like pull this into our own personal lives and you know right now we are very we don't have like strict guidelines other than we have told each other to just be honest with each other i also think that both of us going into this new found relationship are of a certain age so I've seen a lot. He's seen a lot. And so there's that. Um, he's not jealous. I would be the more jealous one. But again, I've worked through a lot of shit in my early 50s by now that while I joke that, yes, I definitely have more than my boyfriend does now. I also can take a lot of tongue in cheek and which I did, couldn't before. I was so sensitive. So I'm I'm curious. What did you just call that man? What did you my boyfriend? <laughs> yes, I do have a boyfriend, y'all now, and it's exciting. And so, but I do think we're approaching it a lot. You know, he knows I have an OnlyFans, a just for fans. He's fine with it, and I think we're just together because we want to be together, and we're not we're talking through a lot of stuff, but it's not that it, it's not that serious as Jeremy likes to say, but it is serious in many ways. Yeah. And you're being honest. And that's the, the basis of any sustainable relationship, in my personal opinion, because once you lose trust in a, in a relationship, it's it's just all downhill from there. And it's so hard to regain trust is so. Well spoken, and it's time for one of our favorite segments that is produced by Straight Up Gay Porn. And Straight Up Gay Porn, as if you haven't listened to the show in a while, does a thirst trap recap. And at the end of the year, they have pick a thirst trap king. Well, this week, which one of these 15 gay porn stars took the best photo? And there's some really good ones, I would say. Big winner of last week's T.T.R. was Raphael James. Look at him. Gorgeous. My goodness. I Stop. can see. I wasn't a part of that one, but I would have picked him in a heartbeat. <laughs> thick cock, thick thighs, tattooed, flowing hair, goatee, doughy eyes. I mean, yummy. You know why I didn't pick him? I, I didn't pick him because he's straight. So Oh, he is? Yeah, and it's pride, so I'm not. I'm okay. Not oh, you've got rules and regulations, <laughs> and I'm not all here for it. This week, we've got a lot of ones. Oh, my goodness. I'm just going through to pick my favorite now. Uh, oh, my. I think I already, I think I picked mine. So mine is by a, a name, <laughs> named by an actor that I like, Benjamin Bratt. I love so and this is not that Benjamin Bratt, but he goes by Benjamin Bratt, and he's got thick, hairy thighs spread open with his dick, huge, nice, thick balls, thick, even cock, uh, <laughs> and girth and size. And he's uncut. Uncut, lying to the side on his left quad. He's lying back. He's glistening like he's sweaty. He's got beautiful nipples, no hair on his chest, which I love. He's got a 
flexing his bicep, his left bicep. He's got a really cool, sexy goatee going on and an L.A. Lakers, or excuse me, an L.A. Dodgers cap on. And he He's looks very, know. to me, very Mexican, sexy, poppy, and I'm here for it. He gets my pick. In fact, I'm going to vote for Benjamin Bratt right now on this. Who is your pick, Cody, and why? So my pick, first of all, I just want to say that there are so many beautiful men out on this tonight. So, but I have to pick Bojack Ryan because, okay, Gael Kriok is number one, but I, I, and I do think he's adorable, but I'm picking Bojack Ryan because he's just gorgeous and he follows me on Instagram. So maybe that's my pick. <laughs> I know, right? <laughs> Uh, so this picture was taken from below and he's wearing like a strappy red vinyl body harness and he's rock hard in the picture. He has like a reddish light shining on his <laughs> glistening body. I know and Chirac is on here too. I told you there were some beautiful men on here, right? <laughs> <laughs> but Bojack could definitely give me the red light special because he is delicious and yeah, I just love him. So thank you, Bojack, for giving us delivering that beautiful picture today. Isn't he cute? Look how cute he is. Very, very. I love it. Tied up in all that red tape. I love it. <laughs> we hate red tape, but you can... I like it tonight. <laughs> oh, my God. So much fun. Uh, Doug watching us live says Damien Knight. Damien it's Knight. his friend. James watching us live says Gael Kirok for me. Love that pick, too. There's so many good ones. I'll put this on tagspodcast.com. Well, this has been such a fun night in the studio i must say i love it you can always follow my co-host cody he's a life coach follow him on instagram at kmg coaching or follow his personal account at mr maurice don't forget to download the single talk about it wherever you download your music and don't forget we are in the middle of a special offer so grab it here where you can hear cody sing that and more in July. So grab a tier, support tags, go to patreon.com forward slash tags podcast before June 30th. And the first few will get Joy Mode, our sponsor. I will send that off to you. I will ask you for your address and it will give you some product. Don't forget patreon.com forward slash tags podcast. Follow me on the gram. I am underscore Steve V or on my Twitter account at tags podcast where you get a preview of my just for fans or only fans. And Cody, in the meantime, continue having hot, hot gay sex. Lovely, everybody. Happy Pride. Happy Juneteenth.